The scene in, in Say Anything is so iconic of you holding up that, that boom box. Do people come up to you all the time still and talk to you about that? Now you tend to be of a different school. You don't like necessarily being a celebrity. You don't do, you don't advance yourself in traditionally in that way. What is the secret, do you think, to a longevity in your industry and how do you keep audiences surprised with the roles that you choose? Uh, I think, you know, you just have to keep trying to get in as much trouble as you can and find your way home, you know? And um, I think you have to authentically explore the different parts of yourself. To John Cusack is one of the many actors who made the Hollywood industry in the 1980s highly saturated. From blockbusters like Say Anything to High Fidelity to Bullets Over Broadway, Cusack has played some of the most beloved roles of all time. But suddenly, Cusack disappeared from our screens after such a promising career, and this has led many of his fans to question the reason for this for some years. Recently, John Cusack has appeared to provide the answer to his sudden descent in the movie industry. So what happened to John Cusack's promising career in Hollywood? Stay tuned to find out. John Cusack is an actor, screenwriter, and producer who made a name for himself as a teen star in the 1980s. Born and raised in Evanston, Illinois, Cusack made his film debut at 16, was recognizable by 18, and became a star at 22. At 16, he played a role in a film as a teen idol when John Hughes and Rob Reiner required his puppyish charm for a small part in 16 Candles and the lead in The Sure Thing, respectively. Speaking about his debut, Cusack said, I was 16 when they wanted to make films about 16-year-olds in Chicago. From then, Cusack made a significant impact on the film industry with standout performances in High Fidelity and Being John Malkovich. His combination of good looks and acting talent made him a sought-after lead actor, and he seemed poised to become one of the era's top names. People admired his charm, and his movies consistently found success. Magazines even hailed him as the quintessential leading man, appreciating his genuine non-conformist persona. However, despite his success in romantic comedies, Cusack felt uncomfortable, being pigeonholed into a single role. He preferred artistic diversity and experiment, but Hollywood often prioritizes traditional leading roles over creative exploration. And this was where Cusack's roller coaster journey in Hollywood began. John's successful career came to an end when he shared his true feelings about the industry. It turns out he didn't dislike romantic comedies, but rather was not a fan of today's Hollywood. The former iconic actor criticized Hollywood's fixation on youth and how quickly it discarded anyone past their prime. He said the industry doesn't respect its stars and only keeps them around as long as they're useful. I've got another 15 to 20 years before they say I'm old. For women, it's brutal. It's only absurd because it's a little bit further than the truth. I have actress friends who are being put out to pasture at 29. They just want to open up another can of Hot 22. He's been in more than 50 films, from Gross Point Blank and High Fidelity to Con Air and a whole bunch of romantic comedies I can't remember the names of. I do recall that he once said that celebrity is the worst thing that can happen to an actor. In an interview with The Guardian about his role in the Hollywood satire, Map to the Stars in 2014, John Cusack further expressed his stance about how terrible Hollywood is, saying that the old ways of filmmaking were gone and now everything revolves around franchises and huge stars. Though he said the industry was a bit kinder when he was coming up. The culture just eats young actors and spits them out. It's a hard thing to survive without finding a safe harbor. But the actor did not stop there. He went as far as calling Hollywood a place where people go mad. While John's bombshell interview puts him in Hollywood's vault of forgotten actors, he has kept speaking out. Cusack has also come out to criticize Hollywood for its greed. According to him, it has become a place where creativity isn't allowed to thrive because it's an industry that only cares about profit. He said, he remembers the seemingly good old days when directors and producers could make good movies. My friend Joe Roth ran Disney until 2000, he says. He made things like The Rock and Con Air to make shareholders happy. But then he also gave six or seven slots to people he liked. I got to make High Fidelity and Gross Point Blank. Spike Lee got to make Summer of Sam. Wes Anderson got to make Rushmore. I had that memory of film and that's gone. Well, that was one of the um I don't know how many, but I've produced and written and, um, a lot of a lot of them that I've done, and that was one of them that, that I was able to do. And that was um, 
at an interesting time in the business. So Now John believes it's all about executive pockets. The whole one for you, one for them system has broken down, he says. Now it's six for them, with a committee cutting the film who weren't part of making it, and maybe one for you. If I could do something like sell watches in China, then I would do that and just make movies like Maps. In another interview, John further revealed the dark secret of the Hollywood industry. In the interview, he talked about how the industry pressures actors to wear tights and act in generic superhero movies for profit. Those who refused were replaced by others who were more willing to comply, just like Cusack experienced. John believes that elites, whether in politics or Hollywood, exploit the middle class and contribute to the conditions for fascism to thrive. He thinks that Democrats have betrayed their principles and that Hollywood is a dangerous place that thrives on exploitation. Speaking out against such practices, he reveals, can lead to consequences as other artists have experienced. One of such actors who got shut down for not complying with the rules of the industry was Dave Chappelle. Dave, the renowned stand-up comedian known for his Chappelle show, reportedly quit Hollywood due to his refusal to conform to the industry's expectations. Most of his Netflix specials pushed boundaries on the very controversial issues in an age of extreme sensitivity. Mark Wahlberg is another artist who faced a similar fate, but for a different reason. Mark was allegedly shut out of Hollywood due to his religious faith. The actor lost the leading role for not following the industry rules because of his religious beliefs. I do not deny my faith, Wahlberg said. That's an even bigger sin, you know. It's not popular in my industry, but you know, I cannot deny my faith. Similarly, Brandon Frazier saw his career plummet after he spoke out against industry maltreatment. Frazier claimed that he was mistreated in 2003 by Philip Burke former president and member of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, Her People. However, Burke denied this accusation. When Frazier spoke out about the incident, the role offers stopped rolling in. The entire experience made Frazier lose it. Meanwhile, by reducing his involvement in the filmmaking industry, Cusack has turned his attention to the political arena. John Cusack, unlike your typical actor, has a keen interest in politics. In 2010, when Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal ceased processing payments for WikiLeaks, Cusack took action by becoming a founding member of the Freedom of the Press Foundation. This organization's primary mission was to safeguard the privacy of journalists who tackle potential risky subjects, Cusack explained. It's an advocacy group aimed at preserving journalists' rights to perform their work and safeguarding their sources. They rely on crowdfunding to support various press organizations, ensuring their independence from external pressures. And he wasn't acting. Hollywood actor John Cusack has something scathing to say for the so-called elites of the Democratic Party. He's calling them out and accusing them of selling out the American middle class. Having a penchant for writing, as he co-wrote some of his works such as High Fidelity and Gross, Cusack has also contributed numerous articles to the Foundation's website, showcasing his deep commitment to the cause of freedom of speech. Cusack has offered more than 20 articles for the Huffington Post. In 2014, he embarked on a journey to Russia alongside Arundhati Roy and Daniel Ellsberg to meet with Edward Snowden. The conversations with Snowden led to a series of essays co-authored by Roy and Cusack, culminating in the book titled Things That Can and Cannot Be Said. Cusack's dedication to activism is evident, and he doesn't rely solely on his celebrity status. Given his significant involvement in politics, it's understandable why he may not be as prominent on the entertainment stage as he once was. So it seems John's prime as an actor has passed, and his fan base now consists mainly of older people who remember him from earlier days. Recalling one moment he experienced at a baseball game that made him realize he had lost his fame, Cusack said, in the next box over, there was a gorgeous girl, young, but she was looking right at me. I went to the bathroom, and I saw her get up. I thought, oh, she's going to come and meet me, and I'm going, you know, I was going to be really flattered. And she was like, I have to take a picture of you. You're my mom's favorite actor. What do you think about John Cusack's failed career? Do you think there's hope for a comeback for the actor? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to not miss any of our updates and slide on to the next page to check out our other videos as you'll love them.